So first of all, I want to make sure that you download all of the attached diagrams. I need to get comfortable with the uh, diagrams because when I'm going to make use of those, uh, both from the when I'm going to explain uh, technologies and when I'm going to also show live demonstration of, of the technologies at the CLI, then I need to know the topology and the IP addressing. So the first PDF file is going to be the physical topology. This is the physical topology for the for INE CCA security track. I'm gonna make use of that. And which that what that means is that we have in there a lot of devices, but we're gonna make use only of certain of those. So it's gonna be a lot of switches in, in here, a lot of routers. You can scroll down to it. We're not gonna make use of all of them, only a, a, a few of them. But of course you gotta know how the how the routers, how the ferals, the switches are being connected at the physical level. Uh, in order to understand some of the topics in there. Then we have what is called the main diagram, which um, we're going to use portions of this diagram to add, to show up specific topics like the ASA firewall, the iOS firewall, the IPsec VPNs, and the AAA protocols and things like that. So if you go, for example, at the main base diagram, then you see we have four routers, router 1, router 2, router 3, and router 4. Also, as you're going to see, we're running in here end-to-end -end EI Japanese routing protocol. In initial configuration files, which are attached to the class, you're going to see that we're running end-to-end -end EIGRP in here to provide routing. The only device which is not running EIGRP in the, from the initial configuration files, it is the ASA firewall because we're going to lively do the uh, EIGRP implementation and OSPF on ASA also with authentication as securing the routing protocol. So the ASA doesn't run EIGRP from the initial configuration files, we're going to know that ourselves within this class. Now likewise, look at, pay attention to the IP addressing system. Like in general, the for example, if you pick a VLAN 23, which is between router 2 and router 3, it is in the format of 136.1. VLAN number, which is 23.0.24. And then each device in general has an IP address which equals with the device number. Like router 2 is going to have a dot 2 IP address in here. You can verify that in the initial conversion files. 3 is going to have a dot 3 address in here. Likewise, in VLAN 13, 3 is going to have a dot 3 address, likewise, and 1 dot 1. The only exception is going to be that the ACS system has a dot 100 address, test server likewise dot 100, and test PC is going to be, is going to receive an address via the ATP. Then you have the, this is, this is the router base diagram, which we're going to be using extensively and mainly. It's a, it's a sub it's a, it's a, a subsection of the main logical diagram. We're going to make use of this. We're going to speak about, uh, for example, whatever has to do with the routers, like the control plane, the management plane, plane protocols. We're going to make use of this diagram. The reason that I have multiple diagrams is because the main diagram it, it has too many devices. So when I'm going to go ahead and also draw on the diagram is going to become convoluted and, e and difficult to follow up with. Then you have what is called the switch base diagram where I have on purposely configured switch one in here at the layer two level. Because you're going to speak about in here about some specific topics, some layer two security topics and I need to understand exactly how this PCA which is in the same VLAN as router 2, how they speak with each other, which is via switch 1. So in pretty much all of the diagrams, like if you look up at the, at the main diagram or at the router base diagram, all of the links deployed on the diagram, like this one, this one, this one, this one, and the other one, the last one, those are layer 3 links. 
So this shows you the layer 3 topology, not the layer 2 topology. The only exception is in, on the switching diagram, which likewise, this is going to be a layer 3 link. This one as well. This one as well. This one as well. Those are layer 3 links. But at the same time, we have these two in here, which are layer 2 links. Because we're going to speak in there, as I was saying, about some layer 2, layer two topics. And I need you to visually see how the switch stands in between. And we're going to see exactly what we're going to deploy at the switch level to protect the network from specific attacks. Likewise, at the AS, this is the ASA base where I'm using the ASA uh, in, in this diagram. Which we're going to go in here and the, as I was saying, we're going to configure EIGRP. Both authenticated and non-authenticated. And OSPF as well. With the same option. Both authenticated and non-authenticated. Likewise, we're going to speak about also on the SA, briefly about the AA part, which is going to be the same thing which we're going to be doing also on the iOS routers. And finally, we have the IPsec section, the IPsec diagram that section, which is going to be used to uh, configure uh, or basically implement IPsec VPNs between, for example, router 1 and router 2. We're going to do in here LAN to LAN IPsec VPNs. For the SSL VPN part, we're going to do it on this diagram. We're going to make use of this. We're going to make sure that, for example, a test server array can initiate, for example, a SSL VPN session to DSA, which is type of remote access, and then gain access to specific resources which are behind the ASA. Okay, so there's a question from Dimitri. Hi, Christian. I noticed that for IP addresses used on IPv4, why not IPv6? Because I think in the uh, previous blueprint, there was IPv6 in the blueprint, but for the current one, which is version 3.0, no more. We're going to look together at the blueprint. I've also attached the PDF, doc PDF document about a blueprint on the course files. So Cisco removed IPv6 from the current version. Now, you might state, okay, why is that? Because IPv6 is gaining more and more, let's say, uh, deployments. It's getting more and more, uh, people are getting more and more used with IPv6. They are starting to deploy IPv6. If you ask me, that was a good call. Because basically, uh, IPv6, so the, when a transition from v4 to v6, everybody said it's going to be just plug and play, which technically is not the case. It was only a marketing term. Because uh, it's a lot of things that are different in IPv6 than IPv4, and also from the application point of view, there are some differences, but most notably from the layer 3 point of view. So you can imagine that the at, at the CCNA level, they would have put it in the in the exam in here the basics of IPv6, and this is IPv uh, this is a security exam, right? So now basically they should have added in here. You, you should from fr you should have known how IPv6 works, which is very different how IPv4 works, and then they should have added in here IPv6, let's say security topics. So what are the challenges with IPv6 from the security point of view? But as I was saying, from my point of view, it makes sense that they have removed this. Because there, there's not enough room in the in the current course, let's say not format, but within the four uh, within the five days course, it's not enough time to put a lot of things in there. And from my point of view, it's better to put fewer topics but cover them uh, better than throw a bunch of a lot of topics and just uh, scratch them at the surface. So it makes much more sense for me, even though of course it is it is bad at the same time that it is an emerging uh, technology, not technology, an emerging uh, let's say. Uh, yeah, technology you could you could set it in, in the internet, and at the same time is not being touched at the CCNA level. 